All right, welcome everyone to our panel session. We have a couple of guests from different organizations and different like work um, industries that are joining us. And we are very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much for your time. And the way that this is gonna work, um, I do have some questions for all of you, which I believe will be like helpful for the audience to hear as well. So I'll be asking those questions and we um, can just like one by one have everybody answer. And if any of the audience members have a question, please just put it in the chat and I will just be selecting like the most popular questions and um, asking our panelists to answer. So with that, let's start. So as we start, I think it'll be like a question as an introduction for each of the members. So I'm gonna be introducing or like putting up um, like the names of the members on the screen. And if you see your name, just um, kind of introduce yourself, give us a little background of who you are, what you work, um, just as an introductory kind of question. Um, so our first panelist is Arastu from General Motors, who are also sponsoring our events. Um, yep, take it away. Hello, everyone, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, glad to be here. I'm Paris Dubarayi. I am a machine learning specialist at General Motors. I have been in General Motors for a little over two years. It's been a great experience so far. I did my undergrad in computer engineering because I always loved robotics when I was in high school. And to me, the path to build robots was to study computer engineering. Then I did my master's in computer engineering as well. Specifically during my master's, I focused on machine intelligence and pattern analysis. I worked in this cool lab that was about adaptive robots and we collaborated with another amazing group that were on social robots. So my specific thesis was on adaptive social robots for children's education. And I loved doing that as well. I'm excited to be here. You're on mute if you're speaking. <laughs> Sorry, thank you for that. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, next we have Amandeep, I hope I pronounced that right, also from General Motors. Hi, yes, you're pronouncing it correct. Uh, hi, my name is Amandeep. Uh, I am working as cybersecurity engineer with General Motors. Uh, like I have been with uh, GM since the uh, last one year. I started as a contractor and recently got hired full time. So as far as my studies are concerned, so I did computer engineering uh, from India and then I moved to Canada in 2016 and studied computer networking for a while. And before uh, starting with GM, I did uh, worked as technical support representative with like uh, two of the known companies from Toronto. And then I was always passionate about uh, technology and especially cyber field of technology. So that's why I pursued a, a certification and then that's how I got into GM. And it's a great experience working with GM. Thank you. Perfect. But we have Lean here from Western. Um, Lean, if you just kind of want to introduce yourself, I know like you're, because you were here since we're missing one person. So you can definitely introduce yourself. I think Lean cannot hear me. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, so hi everyone. My name uh, is Lean. Um, I'm studying at Western University. Um, ma um, I have a major in uh, computer science and minor in software engineering, and I'm currently uh, doing my internship at JD Power in the General Motors team. Uh, software developer over there. I've been there for the past couple of four months. Uh, I got a 12 more months to go. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or you're interested in what I do at my role and the company overall, let me know. Um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. 
All right, um, I think we have one more um, panelist also, um, Vaishnavi. Hi, Hi. Uh, I'm Vaishnavi, I'm from uh, Electronic Arts. I work uh, out of uh, Vancouver in Canada. Yeah, I have been a, a WTM ambassador and uh, also lead uh, GDG in, Van in Burnaby in BC. Also, I'm very passionate about tech, user experience, design, and visual communication is my channel. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, so we have a great line of amazing like women in tech. So let's get started with our first question. So the first question we have for you is, how did you get started in this field? And what led you to pursue a career in technology? And we can just go one by one um, on this whoever wants to start first. I can go first on this one. Yep. So I started, I, I kind of hinted at this. When I was in high school, I was in the robotics team and it was the best part of my education experience. So I always wanted to work with robots, build robots and kind of navigated my path, I guess, through engineering. I wasn't really sure what did I need to study to be able to build robots. And interestingly enough, that's not where my career is today because things change. Uh, but I started with computer engineering. I wanted to do mechanical, but I decided to do computer because software was very amazing for me because brain was very cool for me. Then I got into AI because I was very interested in brains and how the brains work. Then I got into machine learning because that was the application of AI in the industry. And today I'm a machine learning a specialist. So I would say part of it, I always knew, but part of it, you have to be flexible as life comes and as you change, you pick your past and adopt and grow to who you are. Might not be the person you wanted to be when you were in high school, but I'm very happy with where I am today. And I think um, I advise everybody to take that flexibility to their career path. Perfect. Thank you. Um... Anybody wants to jump next? Sure, I'll go next. So I remember when I was in school, I always was curious about computers and stuff. But obviously, computers is like a, a vast field. So you have to like understand which field you want to go into. And as uh, I studied more computers in, in more detailed manner, I figured that like cybersecurity is one of the great fields to be in uh, since, you know, like with the like increased use of technology, crime is increasing. And if the crime is increasing, it's important to make the thing cyber secure. So that's what made me decide to uh, like make my career in this field. Yeah, thank you. Um, Vaishnavi, you want to go next? Sure. I think uh, from a young age, I was very passionate about STEM, on math, science, computers. It was just, I didn't even have a computer when I was uh, starting college. I mean, we couldn't afford one, but it was just a magical world. It's like it just opens gates for you to just contact. And as an introvert, I would feel much comfortable dealing with computers and kind of using my brain and my ideas and my logic, and then just get a transformative output or just... It's like a buddy talking to you, like now how the, the AI and the generative AI talks to you. But then just opens a floodgate of doors and it connected me to people all over the world through social media. And I was like, wow, this has amazing potential. And that's how I've been uh, striving in this industry for almost 15 years and being good at that. Perfect. Um, Lean, you want to go next? Uh, yeah, sure. So my experience is a bit different. Um, uh, since I was young, I actually had zero interest in computers. I never even saw myself being in technology or anything. I always thought that I'll get into some medical school or something, but I never thought in my life I would get into some sort of software engineering, computer science at all. And the way I got into it in the first place was when I realized when I moved to Canada, um, my first plans in studying certain programs was not a thing until you graduate from certain years of bachelor's degree. And then I was looking at all of these programs, 
and I was like waiting the pros and cons of everything. And then there was like that software engineering right in front of me. And to be honest, I wasn't even going to put it in there and apply to the you know, program until my dad was like, why don't you just put it? Like, you're not going to lose anything if you just apply. And after he insisted a couple of times, I was like, you know what, I'll just apply. And then I got into it. And then um, once I got all of the, uh, you know, like all of these, uh, uh, welcome to our university and welcome to the program letters. I was like, okay, fine. Let me read about it. Let me dig into it and maybe watch a couple of YouTube tutorials so I can learn a little bit about it. And then I started like from Hello World when I was like 18 years old or something. So it wasn't like... Uh, anything into it until it was like really much older once I got into university and I felt like really uh, behind compared to everyone else who was interested in computers and everything from the second they were in high school and took all of these classes so um, if anyone is like pursuing like this um, field without having any background or feeling a little bit behind like just know that it's like a very like um, like it's it's not it's like a very common thing a lot of people go through this um this experience and you don't have to always be um you know a technology lover um just put your mind into it uh explore courses uh go online see what you like and what you don't like personally there are things that this is such a big field so there are things that i like things that i don't like so uh it's more about finding and exploring um your you know your interests and what you prefer um, in the field so that's my experience with it yeah I think I kind of agree with Lee and I also was I think I was initially wanting to become like a pilot and then that turned into aeronautical engineering and then it just turned into software engineering so I started software very late like I think a lot of my classmates know like three or four languages and I just know like one or two like I'm still learning but yeah, definitely, like, if you're not someone who thinks that, like, if you think coding is too hard or tech is too hard for you, I think definitely jump into it and, like, try to get your feet a little wet and you might find it a lot interesting. There are some questions in the chat, which I find really interesting. So I'm going to focus on the chat for a little bit. Um, first, I think there's a question for Amandeep. Um, in the cybersecurity field, what technologies or languages do you use? Could you describe a day-to-day -day in your position? That's actually a question. Um, I think that's the second question, but yeah, let's start with Amandeep. <laughs> sure. Uh, so like uh, uh, since the day I started uh, as cybersecurity engineer, like uh, unfortunately I haven't done much of the programming uh, because we have dedicated teams uh, like which take care of programming, but uh, most of the days, like all we, like as a cybersecurity engineer, we are supposed to make sure that the systems are secure. Like we have to make sure that the systems are bad if there are any kind of vulnerabilities. And we have uh, tools to double check if any of the systems which are there or which are connected to the network have any kind of issues or if uh, someone plugged in any kind of USB sticks all those kind of cool stuff but uh, yes like a uh, day to day uh, i don't do much programming anymore although i would love to <laughs> uh, but yes like uh, from day to day most of the time like uh, i have to like we have dashboards which we have to take care of we have to make sure that uh, we are like taking care of all the systems which are showing up as vulnerable or if they're need uh, if any of the systems needs any kind of particular software to be installed on them to make them compliant as per GM standards. So all that kind of stuff. Perfect. Um, so, and there's another question which is addressed to everybody. What is the one thing you learned through your career which you think is important? I think that's another question we have at the end, but um, yeah, if anybody wants to go with that so one thing that i have learned through my career uh, uh, over the years is that one should keep your options open one should always be willing to learn being a girl you should not uh, think that oh like this is not a good field for me you should always be ready to explore new fields because you never know where you're gonna end up like you might end up doing something great which uh, you might not even have thought about so you should always keep your options open and uh, you should be willing to explore. Yeah. Uh, anyone else want to comment on that? 
well, I can go ahead. Um, well, my experience is not a very long experience when it comes to periods and everything. Um, but all I would say is that being a woman, uh, would most especially in this field, would definitely mean that most likely you'll be in a room that is full of men most of the time. Because unfortunately, we're the minority, as we all know, in here when it comes to this program. So um, don't ever feel that you're less important than everyone, because sometimes, unfortunately, this happens. Um, so whenever it happens, um, do not feel, don't don't give excuses. Don't like gaslight yourself into thinking like, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe I'm not as, my, my opinions are not as important or anything. Um, just have some more confidence in yourself and your abilities and everything and be confident whenever you're talking or whenever you're sharing your ideas because confidence is most likely the key in your career and in the future. Um, and because, um, as I've mentioned earlier, we're the minority most of the time, you might be ignored or you might not be looked at or you might not be asked. Um, these are like from my own personal experience. I've had this before. So when that doesn't happen, just make sure that you break that cycle and you start speaking up. Uh, if not, um, just make sure that you are there and all of your um, thoughts are brought to the table. If no one asks you, make sure that you bring up yourself to um, just share everything that you have in mind or anything that you feel is important to be added to the team. Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, but it's something that you have to keep working on. I think you're mute again. I think I accidentally mute myself when I'm like trying to control the volumes and then I just forget. Okay. Anyways, thank you for that. Um, anybody else uh, want to give some last comments before we move on? I guess I would say something short, exactly as uh, Lean said. Advocate for yourself during your career. It's just up to you how you progress and how you move your career. Uh, everything is up to you. Don't ever feel like you have to be quiet or you have to do um, what someone else did or do what you think is the right thing. Um, do do what you, you want to be doing and there's always room for you. Amazing. Okay, yeah. So let's get back to this question. Um, I know Amandeep kind of responded with, like through the chat. Um, does anybody else like... What does your role look like and what are you doing like on a day-to-day -day basis? I can access that. I answer that one too because I know uh, so, so many people wonder what's happening in there. At my role today in, in General Motors in, in machine learning specialist, lots of my, my role is looking into our data. We capture so much data about our vehicles, about our users, and we wanna know what can we see from them. For example, if we see a vehicle is not performing well, if we see an area isn't performing well. So when I log into my job, I'm basically um, building either product. So these are like dashboards for monitors, or I am uh, running a machine learning algorithm that looks into our product in more detail. And the difference is really that machine learning can look into so much data versus me as a person. I can only do so much in a day. So I spend my time creating machine learning models that do my job for me in a way. So they look into the data. They let me know if there's something wrong. And they produce that output and alert for me to look into. And depending on what the output is, I usually contact teams and let them know something is happening. If there is something is happening, obviously this doesn't happen every day. Um, but if something is wrong, we let the team know and we resolve and then we monitor if things got better. And that's what I do daily. I Maybe I don't program as much as I like to, as Amandeep said, but actually I, I do use Python quite a bit these days because everything I do with ML is Python. But yeah, I, I do miss programming a little at times. Okay. Um, Vishnavi, do you want to go next? Sure. My typical day is 60% coding, 10-15% uh, uh, talking, gathering requirements, cross-functional teams, demos, and the rest is just about sometimes doing support, sometimes doing documentation. So it's not a perfect 100% programming, but 
majority does involve programming. That also means you need to learn new stack, new tech all the time, be abreast with all the happenings in tech. And how do you optimize? How do you scale? Also deal with some non-functional requirements like security scaling, right? So uh, it's a good blend and that always keeps me on my toes that I can never take things for granted. I do something today and then I look back and I say, oh, this is not the right way. And then just, oh, how do I refactor? How do I optimize it better? So it's 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 a work in progress. It's, a, it's every day of learning. And trust me, sometimes it's also some weekends when I have to catch up, do some courses. Apart from being a parent, apart from being a new immigrant and not having that village support. So it, it's tough, but then sometimes just the uh, cognitive stimulation and then achieving these things and trying to pat myself on the back to say, okay, I can do this, I got this, is is how my typical day looks like. Great. Um, yeah, Lean, uh, I want you to answer this question with also a question that came up in the chat. Um, so the question was, do you like intern while you were studying at university? Um, yeah, um, actually at our university, um, there's like uh, the internship program and uh, there's also a collab program for engineering students. So I would most definitely recommend that you uh, check if your university does provide these kind of programs. Even if, in, if your university doesn't have this specific program, you can always go on the side um, and search up for jobs and uh, internships on your own. Uh, build your resume. And to be honest, if there's something that I would... Um, like genuinely advice everyone is that start as early as possible like one mistake that I've done is I definitely did not start earlier and when I say start as soon as possible I'm talking about even first year of university even if you don't have a crazy amount of experience in coding or whatever because there's always these kind of companies that would provide these certain internships for um, beginners that have like limited amount of uh, experiences and uh, I've only known this, like, by the time I was looking into internships seriously this year. Um, so don't feel demotivated if your university does not provide such a program. Because I do know, like, some friends of mine who did not enroll in some specific co-op or internship programs. And they're doing currently amazing on their own. Um, just don't give up. Um, it's, it's not going to be easy. It doesn't mean that you are in a university internship program that you're guaranteed a job. At the end of the day, it's your... Um, it's your own work that you put in to uh, build up the good uh, resume, um, excel in your interviews and everything. So university just gives you like the first step when it provide when it provides internship program, but the rest is all on you. Um, even like I know some people who are in the internship program, but still did not guarantee any internship position this uh, summer. So the, like being in a program at a university for internship or co-op doesn't guarantee you anything. It's all on you. And also all on the luck sometimes you get lucky especially with uh, this kind of economy right now it's going crazy um so i uh, just don't give up and try as much as you can it's all a hassle so uh keep up with it <laughs> perfect thank you so much um our next question is what are some of the most exciting or challenging tasks that you encounter regularly um, who wants to start? <laughs> I can go. Want to start? Yep. Most of the challenges uh, being in a senior side of uh, engineering, I can tell you sometimes it's ego management, sometimes it's <laughs> leadership, because don't get me wrong, you know, engineering, software engineering per se, is a social skill. We we just don't work with our computer and ourselves just with the camera on, right? It's it's a social setup. We we need to work with each other. It's a collaborative and communicative environment. So sometimes it's like not all fingers are the same. Sometimes there's conflict of interest. Sometimes there's a play of superiority dominance. So though your primary work as per your job description, as per what you're hired for is perhaps uh, design and delivery of features, let's say, but in real life, it also involves empathy. It also involves compassion. It's all, it also involves how do you treat someone, someone who's an intern, co-op, someone who's just trans, uh, transitioned from, let's say, a non-tech industry, tech industry, but they are capable, right? So it's fundamentally about human values. It's fundamentally about how you treat each other. 
and give that safe space for women, right? So most of them, I realized that more than my work, I'm learning everything to through observing someone, observing my male counterparts, I'm observing the leadership and say, how can I emulate them? Or what is it that I don't want to do that is being done? How do I kind of stop myself from doing the subconscious bias, unconscious bias? So trust me, these are also the skills that you want to learn. And that, that's what keeps me going every day. Perfect. Um, anyone else? I want to second that, actually. The most challenging task most of the day is soft skills. It's how you present something, how you search for something, how you treat others around you. It makes a huge difference in the work environment, in the team dynamic, and in how much you enjoy your job. Uh, Though I'm sometimes excited by the technology that comes, especially new technology, I find something, I learn something. I love learning every day. Uh, some of them could be real simple things that I just never thought about as a computer engineer. For example, how do you present the data the best? Um, but these are these are cool things that I, I enjoy learning. So this is exciting, but I also enjoy learning the soft skills. And I want everybody to remember to um, advertise for your soft skills. If you're good at something, don't think that doesn't matter and all you have to know is the number of programming languages, you know, I definitely think people and companies will care about your soft skills and your people skills. Definitely. Um, Amandi, do you want to comment? Yeah, sure. So actually, as a part of my job, I have to like coordinate with people from different fields, like uh, we're diff working in different areas, like a uh, I get to meet different people of different ages and it's, I feel very excited to do that. Um, more like it lets, like some of, sometimes you hear them saying, oh, like it's so good to see girls like you working in technology that you are so tech savvy and stuff. And that uh, really like keeps you motivated <laughs> and uh, it plays a big role when like a, getting jobs done uh, especially in a manufacturing setup yeah. mm -hmm. okay and lean any final comments uh i think like one of the challenges that um i face is that like um like when you get um especially working in a team uh you'll have to always keep in mind that open communication must be one of the first priorities to be able to, you know, um, resolve any misunderstandings or any like issues that might occur because uh, it's, it's not easy um, to always express what you have in mind and everything. And sometimes they might come up as re rude when someone else did not really mean it. So um, just make sure that you have open communication with your coworkers all the time um, and uh, make sure that you set boundaries to yourself because um, um, I feel like it's, sometimes it's so easy for uh, someone else to cross them and, you know, disrespect you in a way. And uh, you would be in a position where you're like, I'm not sure what to do next. Um, so um, I would say, like, always get consultation from people who um, not in the same team, maybe uh, your friends or seniors that you might know so that they can guide you on how to um, overcome these challenges or these misunderstandings or any kind of um issues that might arise um because that, that's really gonna um play a huge role in your mental health and you don't want to really show up to a team where you have like some inner you know uh kind of uh inner like uh i don't know like, some some you know tension uh that you did not resolve in a way or another so uh that's uh that's um my advice when it comes to this part okay thank you we will move on to the next question. Um, how do you stay up to date with the rapidly changing technological landscape, especially now AI is taking over everything? <laughs> um, what is your take on that? Who wants to start? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead. Um, I think um, the main thing that I would really emphasize on is know what you exactly are interested in and what you really want to pursue because like this is such a very huge field there's so much into it you cannot just be keep up with every single thing 
Um, and that's why they keep telling you, like, don't know all of the programming languages, know at least one programming language that you could excel at and you can really do a great job with it. So um, when it comes to these changes, I think people get overwhelmed because what they think of is like, oh, changes in like machine learning and AI and robotics and like databases and like web development. There's like so much and people just get overwhelmed. So um, just to have one focus, at least one or two, something that you're really interested on. And, and and just stay updated. Like if you could dedicate like an hour or two in your day to kind of improve um, on that and learn a new skill when it comes to this department, um, that would be awesome. And I think you could like, you know, progress because it, it, like, it's it's more about like self-learning most of the time and teaching yourself all of the, because if you're like away from it for a long time, you might forget, you're going to lose your skills and everything. So uh, definitely progress and cons consistency and not being too distracted with everything around you because like it's really a huge <laughs> field so um, that's what I would say thank you Lean. Uh, anyone else I want to say something um, kind of along the lines of what Lean said uh, I don't always like it's okay you don't have to always do everything at all times that is such a huge pressure if you're interested in something I, I usually try to like st check out my LinkedIn in a while check out some of like emails I'm getting some of newsletters so if something comes up I just kind of see the title and if it piques my interest I'll try to fit it in my schedule to check at it sometimes uh, sometimes it's just a discussion with a colleague you ask them have you heard about this and if they they know maybe it's a kind of fast course on it you don't have to keep up with everything. Trust me, when you need something, it's going to come your way and you will have the time to learn it properly. So just to stay up to date, maybe with the news and know what's out there. So you have some ideas about what's what's there. And another tip I received from um, a mentor is to book out some time in your calendar for learning. The reason I say book it out is because when you get into the industry, you see that your calendar is almost always out of your control. It's filled with things. So book some time with yourself um, and book it in your calendar so nobody overbooks you. And you can use that time for learning, for innovation, for thinking outside the box, uh, for reflection, for anything that's a little needs a little bit of a quiet time. Great. Um... Any other comments? Sure, uh, I can add that. I think in one of my previous questions, I answered about how, how it is relevant to stay up to date. We, we all have to embrace change, right? That means once a month on a Saturday or someday on a weekday, you just book a couple of hours for yourself. I follow a lot of YouTube tutorials given that I'm a visual learner. Sometimes I listen to a lot of talks. If if you like to save some time, use it a podcast mode while you're sleeping. When you're not sleepy, just plug it in and listen to things. Maybe you never know, it will give you good sleep as well. If we have a good orator who speaks well, trust me, I have done that too. Just any form, you know, think about your learning style. Are you a visual learner? Are you a spatial learner? Are you an auditory learner? Depending on that, a lot. You know, if you just don't catch up with all the emerging trends and technologies, you will miss the bus in a way. So bi-weekly, once a month, you need to take the time out. As a busy parent, I know I could always be crunched on time, but sometimes to be in the game, you need to do what it takes. That means that you stay relevant. You just use any form of resources or sometimes just sign up on a, with, uh, you know, sometimes just free courses don't get the jam. You you, you don't get that personalization. Maybe uh, use your company to see if there's a learning budget, there's a, uh, a skill enhancement budget and say, okay, I'm going to sign up on this course, which is very personal, very exclusive. And it's like a one-to-one -one or like a more a small group of cohort. Whatever gets you going, just embrace that and uh, keep up at that. Perfect. Uh, Amandeep, do you want to add any last comments? Um, yes, I think as uh, Rasato mentioned earlier as well, that it's not uh, important to know everything about everything, but it's good to know everything about one particular thing. So try to focus on one thing 
and uh, just try to get as much information as uh, you can on that. Uh, yes, there are like um, many of the like uh, forums which you can subscribe to if you want to stay up to date about your particular fields. So yeah, like uh, all that kind of sources, like especially in today's era, like a uh, internet gives you lots of good information, uh, which is not a hundred times correct, but still like I would say it's a good source. Um, yeah, like just try to keep up to date to, with the things which you are passionate about and uh, that will go a long way. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to our next question. Um, are there specific courses, degrees, or certifications that you would recommend for someone who's interested in your field? Uh, yes, uh, like uh, if anyone is interested in getting into cybersecurity, I would say CompTIA Security Plus is the entry-level certificate, which one for sure should go for. And uh, it's not uh, that like a uh, difficult either. It's just that you have to be like your basics have to be clear, and uh, it's a good certificate to like a uh, show up on like to uh, to brag about on your LinkedIn as well. <laughs> so I think uh, that's the one which I should say is must if anyone wants to get into cybersecurity. Okay. Hey. Anyone else? I can add uh, only specific to software engineering. I don't have idea about other things. The best way to learn programming is by doing it. As simple as signing up and uh, signing up and having your own GitHub page, even writing a small hello world, and then every day adding few layers. Okay, how do I create a small backend, front end? How do I uh, learn to understand adaptive patterns. There are ample resources, ample websites that help you, teach you a lot of things. Just take that idea and start getting hands on because the more you write, it's like when you write, things get registered. Same way, when you listen to something, when you pay for a tutorial, it, it the retention, your memory retention is only 10 to 20%. But if you keep doing it every day, it's like, you know, you want to write a book, you have to write a book. You just need a pen, a paper, and start writing. It's as simple as that. If you want to learn software engineering or programming, you just start. You can start at 30s. You can start in 40s. doesn't matter. When you start, just be consistent. And uh, just like any other skill, I, I tend to forget things that I've done in the past. But when I resume from where I left it, I can look at my GitHub pages on my software, on my uh, logic, and say, OK, I can do this. We, we all have AI. We have compilers to help you. but just do it like Nike says. Yeah, um, anyone else want to give any comments? Lean or Amandeep? Um, uh, I'll probably say just to make sure that you don't like go straight up to Yodimi, um, and then look at all of these courses and think, oh my God, I'm going to purchase this one and purchase that one. And this sounds really cool. Let me purchase this one as well. Um, YouTube is there. First of all, there's a bunch of free, great tutorials on it. Uh, they might not be the best, but like there are so many beginner-friendly tutorials that you could watch. Um, and they're honestly a great start. Uh, watch it, see if you really like it. And then from there, build on and see if there's any other courses that you could find online. Um, whether it costs money or not, um, I'd say like just make sure that you have a good background on what you really need to take in terms of courses because it's really easy to get overwhelmed with all of these certificates and all of these courses and all of these skills. I've been there before. Trust me, I've purchased courses that I've never even looked at later on because um, I realized that's not what I really are, what I'm really, um, what I would be really interested in. So that's uh, that's my advice when it comes to uh, getting certificates or like courses. Just make sure that you start like like uh, with a logo course to start. <laughs> Don't jump up into purchasing, please. All right, thank you, Lean. Amandeep, do you have any final comments? Mm, 
I think I already commented on this one, but uh, uh, yeah, like uh, I think Lean mentioned it correctly. Like whenever you want to go for any of the certificates, it's, it's better to like just to try to get a basic idea of what those uh, certificates basically cover. And you can obviously uh, search for those particular certificates on YouTube or even Google them just to know what they basically covered rather than spending so much on Udemy or any of the courses. So yeah, I think it's a good idea to just uh, use the internet the best way we can. Because like YouTube is a big source of knowledge if we use it correctly. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, I don't know if there's a controversy, but I think there's like a very, um, between like Coursera and Udemy, like which one is better? Have you, any of you like used it personally or? Um, I have used Udemy, uh, not Coursera so far. Uh, um, I like the courses. It's just a, like a, the, like it depends on the course which you are taking. Like let's say, if I'm searching for any particular course, there will be like hundreds of uh, courses for the same topic, mm -hmm. and it's very important to decide if, or like, it's it's a very big decision to decide which one you want to purchase. Um, but yes, obviously it's it depends on the content, right? Uh, no matter whether it's Udemy or Coursera. Like uh, as long as uh, you got the right content and you have got your basics clear, it should not really matter. It more of it's on you as well. Like uh, uh, if you are willing to explore or if you are willing to learn, mm -hmm. as long as one is willing to learn, no matter where they are learning from, right? If one has to learn, they will learn from anywhere. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody else? Should we move on to the next question? Okay. Um, how can students best prepare themselves for a career in tech while they're still in high school or university? So most of our audience is in high school, like probably grade 10, 11. Um, some of them are just starting out university. So what is your advice with like something that is so, um, I guess, hard to get in now because there's just so many people like trying to get into tech. So how do you make yourself stand out right from the beginning? Now that you set this question and talk about your audience, it reminds me of the previous question. I think um, using university resources are underrated. In most cases, you don't need to be taking extra courses. University should be enough. Um, foundations of everything I, I learned is from university. And I understand sometimes the courses and the quality you needed to be, or maybe you feel like your professors aren't available as much as you need to be. Reach out to another professor or reach out to TAs. Uh, try to form study groups. Hopefully university is enough. I, I would really be upset to see that people have to pay for extra courses on top of paying for university. So I'd say focus on university. Uh, but how should you prepare yourself for a career in tech whilst they're in university? So I think that there is multiple layers to this, and I'm sure I'm going to miss something other panels will add. But one of it is obviously learning. So one thing you need in the tech world is to be good at what you do. So focus on the courses that matter to you. I'd say even focus on the ones that you think aren't very relevant. You never know what you learn. When will it come to save you? It's very interesting. You might think something just nothing to do with software, but when you're doing software, that exact one thing you know is what sets you apart from everybody else who already knows software as well. So take learning seriously and network. I know this was so hard for me personally in university, but you really want to have connections who, first of all, tell you about the job so you learn about what's out there opens your worldview, you see your friends taking different jobs, different companies, kind of give you an insider into the company. Maybe you, you even decide, oh, that's not a company I want to work for. So you want to have network, not just to get jobs, but to just know about jobs, know what's out there, know what people are doing. But also to get jobs, you, you want to make yourself different. You, you ideally would want to have someone who would watch for you, someone who would advocate for you when you can't do it for yourself. 
always do advocate for yourself, but you want to have a support system. You want someone who says, yes, I've worked with this person and their work is amazing. So build those relationships, especially in university. Don't take them lightly. The people you meet in university are going to be your future colleagues. You might end up in a different company or the same company, but I'd say those are some of the best relationships you make. If there's an event, if there's a recruiting event, if there is a conference, attend, connect to people, learn from people. So connect just with the curiosity to learn. Don't always think if you connect with someone, they have to give you a job. You you want to learn from them. So connect with people, learn from them. Everybody has an interesting story to share. And I'm sure these connections will create a wonderful network for you, which will support you and teach you when you're trying to get into the field. So those are my twofold advice, learning and connections. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, Vaishnavi, do you want to go next? Adding to, uh, yeah, she made a great point. I agree to all of them. As students, leverage your student membership, right? So many courses as a student is free or almost free. Don't jump into or don't have this illusion that everything you need, to, the best is always like not free. You need to pay for it. There's so many places it's free. At the moment you're a student, let's say you want to sign up and uh, buy a Visual Studio license or a ID for IntelliJ, whatever is it, explore the student plan. Ask if your university has a plan. See if you can get a, a bulk plan by contacting your university admin. Explore all these options first. Don't jump on paying. Or if there's any conference that you're actually aiming for, try being a volunteer. You know, these are also skills that we talk about, meta skills and soft skills that uh, the other panelists also mentioned. So leverage all these. You know, when you think of career in tech, don't just think of programming. Also pay attention to the soft skills. So volunteering is a big thing or, or be a speaker, you know, you just say, how do I grow in tech while still at school? That could be a good topic to start with and just leverage the power of community. There is a, a Google developer student club. There are a lot of, uh, there's a Git, GitHub star program. There are a lot of these that leverage students or people who are in school. Just don't miss out on those things. I mean, I'm too late and I'm like, oh, all these things existed and how do I not know it? You know, I was living under a rock for the longest time. But then the power of your email, the student email is you just open a lot of window for a lot of free things, use it. That is true. A lot of things that um, you, can, you can get a lot of things for free while you're a student. Um, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I can add something. Um, you mentioned this and it just provided me with some uh, flashbacks on when I was like, you know, doing my resume and like applying to jobs and internships and everything. And then uh, when I was like writing down my resume, I was like, uh, what should I put in there that would make me like really, really stand out and like just look at the eye of the recruiter? Because it's really not easy. And most of the time or sometimes you kind of like underestimate the things that you have done and the projects and everything. So um, what I would say is that like always try to like when you're in university or in high school, look into clubs or any volunteering opportunity where you could grow from it, where you could build like personal projects, um, learn a bit more of the teamwork because that is really important in this uh, in this field um so i look into that a lot don't underestimate it um if you feel like you're not too great like still with a certain skill or anything look into beginner friendly clubs uh look into beginner friendly hackathons um trust me like it's not as crazy or scary as you might think everyone starts from somewhere so look into that get into it um and one after another you'll find yourself like having this great like um First of all, these great projects, these great volunteering experiences, and this is great like uh, network, um, uh, networking, uh, like uh, networking, um, um, networking uh, circle that you got. So um, start like from your community um, and build up um, in in every aspect uh, your your resume because your resume is basically what is going to make you stand out when you are looking for internships. So just keep thinking to yourself, what is something that I would really want to put out there on my resume? And, and like, I know like uh, some people might say you're more than just a resume, but when it comes to an internship and everything and applying to jobs, that's the first thing that they'd be looking at, right? So 
do your best to build it up um, as soon as possible because uh, that's going to be making you really confident when the time comes and you start applying everywhere. That's from my personal experience and what I felt uh, when I was like, you know, putting down all of my projects and feeling proud or not proud about certain areas. So um, that's my advice. Yeah, and Lee mentioned something very important, which is like resumes. Also, for our audience, we're doing resume reviews and coffee chats tomorrow. So if you have not signed up for that, please do it as soon as possible and we can get you a one-on-one -on -one coffee chat with some of our industry guests. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any comments or should we move on? I don't remember if everybody answered. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on. Um, how does collaboration play a role in your projects or in your like work life? What are the key teamwork skills required in your field? I think we kind of lightly touched on this before as well, but if we just want to dive deeper into that, like how do you projects for um, you guys work? Anybody want to go first? I can go first. Yep. So collaboration is not necessarily where we are always talking to a coworker, having those water cooler chats. Collaboration can also be through software, for example, project management software, for example, software like Slack uh, that you use for communication or Microsoft Teams or Zoom. So just know basic etiquettes, always be nice, be polite, address people, know their pronouns. So collaboration plays uh, a big role, but leverage software to communicate, collaborate, uh, don't be shy of syncing up, starting a quick huddle. Yeah, uh, these are the key skills and pretty much every software company has some shape or form of any of these softwares. Like you could use Confluence to document or yeah, you can have your own internal wiki. Just, yeah, just join it and use it. Perfect. Um... Anyone else? Uh, so, like, as far as for cybersecurity role, like, I would say collaboration plays a big role. Um, uh, since, uh, like, uh, being a cybersecurity engineer, you have to secure the systems. And most of the time, those systems, they come, like they are not, the, you are not the owner of those systems. So there are people from different areas of the plant. So, so that's why it's very important. Like I would say that uh, having good soft skills plays a great role in uh, getting the work done. You, like in tech, no matter whether it's in technology or in engineering. It plays a very important role. So, and teamwork is another one because, like a, a like a team help. Like when you know that uh, uh, you guys are working on something and your team is good, then you can be hundred percent confident of achieving your targets or getting the stuff done throughout the plant. So yes, collaboration and uh, teamwork is very important. And in, for the key, key teamwork skills, I would say proper or clear communication is the key for a good team. So I would say, yeah, that's uh, one of the most important thing for a good teamwork, like just to make the communication clear and concise if uh, any kind of questions better to ask rather than like thinking, oh, no, they might have said this thing. They might have meant this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anybody else? I want to add something about teamwork skills. I, I think keep an open mind to everybody you come across with and try to build Good relationships this is the most important skill i think you need check your unconscious bias towards people um, and try to basically stay open to everybody give everybody proper recognition for the work they do um, i don't know smile turn your camera on in virtual meetings 
I think building relationships with people you come across with is going to make the biggest difference in how much you like your work and how much you enjoy your day to day. Right. Um, Lean, any last comments? Uh, they all mentioned like great points and I agree with everyone. Um, maybe one thing that I would say when it comes to uh, being in a team is that just know that you don't have the answers to all the questions. So uh, make sure that you don't like hesitate to seek for help or ask questions or get clarifications. Sometimes you might think that you know what you're doing or you think that this is the right thing, but it doesn't hurt to always verify and check up with uh, your team and uh, make sure you're on the right track and um, get some feedback and advice all the time. Um, not all the time, like whenever necessary. Um, yeah. Um, so just uh, just keep that in mind because uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, the team makes the dream work. So everyone's input and like, you know, um, would be great. Um, and yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Our next question is how do you manage work-life balance in a field known for its demanding pace? So we know like tech roles are considered to be very like demanding. Um, and how do you balance like work with life? Who wants to go first? Uh, okay, so maybe I can go um, first. Uh, well, initially I found myself like when I especially started working, I realized that I just wanted to, you know, uh, prove myself to everyone. So I was kind of spending like the working hours during the day, spending these eight hours working. And then after that, I was like, I feel like I need to get more work done. And then after the eight hours were over, I would like spend some time at night and work more. Um, and then I started to realize, first of all, I'm not getting paid for those extra hours that I'm spending into work. Uh, that is the first thing. Um, the time that is being gone on working is really not going to be uh, back by any chance. So um, know your priorities in life. Um, and work is not always a priority. Uh, family, friends could also become your priority. It's nothing bad if you have them as your priority. Um, just make sure that you don't overwhelm yourself with work because most of the time you'd be overwhelming yourself because you know you want to be there for the team and uh, uh thinking that like uh like th th what i'm trying to say is that if you even get the work done early there's always going to be more work regardless so uh if you get it quickly or not if you get it done like uh, like in an hour or two right after it the second after you're going to get another ticket and more work for you so uh just go with the right pace uh it's not a race uh, that's one thing that my senior developer always tells me like lean is not really a race uh take your time with things um so uh just uh, sometimes you just have to pause and take a deep breath and uh, i think for a second like what you're doing and how you're planning things and if you're like taking work on the advantage of something else like your time with your family friends or even your personal time so uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Maybe like, what are some things that you do to just relax and get away from tech? <laughs> so I can add a few cents. Uh, yeah. having gone through burnout multiple times, now I can recognize when I'm burning myself out. So it's so important to have those hobbies and just work. So you, you need to work on three things, right? Physical, mental, and spiritual level. So your work could be passion and then can pay you bills, get you that money bi-weekly. But it's very important to kind of try to switch off whatever be your jam, hiking, or just doing nothing, just turning off all your stimulations like sensory overload experience that you receive from your phones from social media just walking away or just sitting and doing nothing it could be as simple as those things or just have a hobby which is more tactile more non-tech like me i i do a lot of jigsaw puzzles like thousand two thousand pieces at any given point in time i started even documenting my jigsaw puzzles i write and it could also mean sometimes just taking a pen and paper and writing or just going and uh, exploring yourself in environment in nature right when when the weather is good it's very important and 
as a parent, I struggle all the time. I, I still not uh, kind of crack that balance. So that I'm just finding harmony by seeing what can I delegate? What can I automate? As an engineer, can I automate certain things in my life? Can I leverage some things? Like I use Notion to automate a lot of things. I use some uh, scripts to write and then kind of make my life easy and now I'm trying to seek some help, hire some people who can do things for me, like maybe hire a cleaner once every two weeks, right? So that I'm not burning myself. So it's a work in progress. We all learn, but we all start somewhere or just listen to people who have advices. But the bottom line is get back on your hobbies, that hobby where you doodled as a child, but it's somewhere stashed in your parents' cupboards. Just bring that back on. You don't have to show it to anyone, but it's it's more like therapy for yourself or color or just art classes. Anything and everything can be a good way to stop yourself from burning out. Perfect. Thank you. Um, anyone else? I want to take some pressure off of off of you by saying. I, I don't always manage my work-life balance. Sometimes it really goes out of balance. The goal is really to try to come back to something, right? Try to find your balance. It's absolutely okay if work sometimes is your priority. There are sometimes in your career, I'm early in my career, um, early in your career, you might feel like you want to do more, you want to stand out. Um, as long as, again, you find your balance, you don't want to burn out and you don't want this to be um you, taking over your entire day so try to balance it out by by doing some of the things you like i think um the other panelists mentioned it uh try to go back try to take a step away and sometimes when you take a step away you see that you found a solution for something work related so give your mind some proper rest really the goal is to remember resting is not wasting your time doing your hobbies is not wasting your time it's absolutely enabling you to do better at work. So do you want to do better at work? Take some time off work. That's, that's true. Um, rest to reset. Um, yeah, Mandeep, any last comments? I think. I think we have uh, covered almost all the topics, but yes, we spend uh, almost eight hours or more at work most of most of the days. So <laughs> it's very important to try to balance it. But yeah, obviously, we always end up uh, getting ourselves uh, more focused on work. But yes, it's better, and it's very important to have some hobbies or any kind of like any kind of exercise that will keep your mind off work for a while. Because yes, as you mentioned, rest is very important. And, uh, and if you want to get your mind reset for it to work better, it's very important to rest. Like, yes, it's very important to find work-life balance. Obviously it's very hard for most of us to like uh, reach that point but yes it takes time but uh, yeah like try to just at least uh, uh, make sure to spend 30 minutes with you, just yourself doing nothing maybe just going for a walk alone like whatever makes you happy just try to do that and I think that will make the difference That is very true. Um, just speaking as a university student, I think even as like school students, burnout affects us all um, with like different kinds and different stages of life, but rest is very important at every stage of life. Um, okay, moving on. I believe this is probably our last question. Um, so what advice we're also like ending it on a nice note. So what advice would you give to high school or early university students considering a career in technology? Um, and I know there was a similar question with this like before. So we can kind of paraphrase it saying, is there something that you wish you had known or something that you wish you had done differently when you were starting out? Like now that you're long into your careers, do you wish that there was something that you had done differently? And what would that be? I can give some some advice that I think it's very simple. I wish someone told me that. Um, 
don't really overthink it. If you are interested in a career in technology, it doesn't matter if you're computer science or computer engineer or this university or that university, you'd be surprised how much flexibility the real world offers you. I have people who are my colleagues, work day-to-day -day job with me, who studied psychology, who studied biology. It doesn't really matter. If you're interested, don't, don't say no to yourself. Don't say this is not for me or that I can't do or J just do it. You will find find your way there. It's very flexible. Nothing is on a on a stone written on a stone. You can change your mind. You can grow. You can change your mind about what you wanted to do. Switch over. Nothing will ruin your career or ru ruin your experience. Uh, be open minded to different things. It's okay to switch. It's okay to change your mind. Um, I had to change my mind about studying mechanical engineering. Initially, I wanted to start at the start of physics and I was freaking out that if I study engineering, it's going to be that. Then I thought mechanical engineering is very male dominated. And, you know, laughs on me because I came to General Motors, a, compu a company filled with mechanical engineers. Most of them are men and I'm doing just fine. So don't be too scared to do that leap of faith. Things are going to work out. Things are going to be okay. And you don't have to worry about every little detail so much. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Uh, just a few cents uh, to what the other panelists mentioned. Just don't beat yourself up. I think uh, guilty as charged. I have done that. I will always be like, oh, I'm neurodivergent. I'm not as smart. I'm a late bloomer. You know, it, it took me a while to even understand. It, it sometimes takes me time to understand things. I don't get it like some people, like they're gifted, they get it all the time. And that imposter syndrome always kicks in. Or I keep telling myself, maybe I just got lucky. Maybe I'm not good enough. Uh, maybe, you know, every meeting I would say, oh, what if I get laid off tomorrow? But then I eventually realized that this the circle of influence, circle of control, what is it in your control? What is not in your control? And it's okay, you know. I always wanted to be a journalist, to be honest, and I'm a closet writer, but then I'm here in tech. But sometimes you, you just do what's what you do and just it's okay. It's okay to not be super passionate hundred percent time. It's okay to not love every job you do, you know. Look at our parents. They, my mother was always cooking, always in the kitchen, always cleaning everything. I don't know if she really loved it. She was burnt out but sometimes as parents maybe they had no other option it's you know we we all go through these generational trauma but it's okay you know don't get carried away by all these sometimes false positives like i say oh you have to be 100 percent passion you have to wake up and say oh this is what i need to do sometimes it's not as black and white as we think you know kind of don't get carried away by influences or by people it took a lot of time for people to get what they are. We don't know their struggles. So it's okay. Whatever is your struggle, it is your struggle. And uh, if you're still working pay paycheck to paycheck, it it's still okay. Just be very realistic with your expectations. But my sincere advice is stop burning yourself out from personal space, having experienced that. You know, find ways to kind of unwind, find ways to do things that you love outside of work have friendships outside of work. Yeah, I think these are real life lessons, more not so much in career, but then what is career without life, right? Very true. Um, anyone else? Yeah, like I would like to mention that like, so what's important is that just take the first step, then you will figure out then what you want to do next. So don't be afraid to take the first step was anything whether it's your career wise whether you want to like pursue in technology or like no matter what kind kind of career you want to go delve into just be willing to take the first step because rest will work out you will know whether you want to explore more in that career and if not then you will know that too so yeah just be willing to take the first step okay um, and Lean, I guess, like, you could also kind of answer with, like, tips and advice for, I guess, applying to internships, because I think some people are trying to do that, or how, like, what you would suggest them to do. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, also, guys, I'm sorry if my Wi-Fi is not being great or if I'm lagging a little bit because my connection right now is not too awesome. So if I was lagging, I apologize for that. But um, okay, so uh, as uh, Amandeep said, she's uh, such a great point is that you should take the first step. Um, you're going into university or you're spending your last year of high school, like focus on first thing, like you're spending time with the people around you. So enjoy that thing um let, get yourself comfortable in your place um because at first if you're mentally stable and you feel that you're in a such good um mindset and everything trust me everything afterwards is going to be much easier um something that i would really advise you to all focus on is surround yourself with passionate people and people who really know what they want to do in life um i'm not saying like we all have to figure out what we want to do um like tomorrow like everything like step by step but you should associate with yourself with the people who have like similar interests as you especially when it comes to career goals or like looking for example into internships uh, i've realized that this actually provides you such a, with such a great motivation um to kind of you know as land a good job or like go on the right path when you're applying um um I, 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 everything that i've said about like getting into clothes and you know participating into events and volunteering something you should be looking into when you're moving forward uh, to your next step and something to also keep in mind is that we do, uh, between a step and another there's no specific duration of time like your timing could be completely different from someone else so please never ever compare yourself with someone else don't ever think to yourself okay th this person got an internship first year in university but i'm getting an internship i still did not get an internship when i just graduated from school or someone just got an internship in their third year and not getting anything right now so don't compare yourself to other people we all have different pace in life pace of time in life um your 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 time might not be right now when it could be someone else's time so um focus on yourself and always remind yourself of asking yourself this certain question what am i doing to even land this goal or to even even land this job or to even land this like whatever you have in mind whatever goals you have just keep asking yourself what are the current um things that you're doing so that you can achieve these goals uh because you cannot just sit there and be like i'm gonna i want i want this job like are you are you for example um building up the skills that are needed for the job are you building up the experience that is needed for this job like you cannot just sit down there without putting in the effort and the work so um what I would say and recommend uh, for anyone who's looking into internships or like planning for like applying for internships the next year is that um, sit down, um, maybe put a random template for your resume. It could be like it's like the category of experiences, projects, uh, volunteering and write down what are the things that you have accomplished so that you have a clear vision of what are the things that you have done and what are the things that you're aiming to get done. By doing so, you're going to realize there are so many areas of improvement. Trust me, my first uh, resume of the second I created, I was like, this is so bad. Like, I wish I did this and this and that. And then after that, I improved it. And then I thought for a second, the, this thing, the resume is incredible. And now I'm looking back at that you know, resume. I'm like, no, this was not an incredible resume. This is so much better now. So you realize over time that there's so much space for improvement. So um, make sure that you have everything right in front of you and everything is like, listed so that you can know where you should be improving and what should you, you should be getting done so that you can plan your next step appropriately and um, as i've said like honestly it makes sure that you're following your pace of time when you're going to your next step and uh, don't overwhelm yourself it's easy to say this but i know it's hard to accomplish this but I'm sure everyone of you is capable of doing it. Um, I'm saying this, if I was able, for example, to land an internship, I'm sure you will. Um, it's maybe, if you still did not, it's maybe not your time yet, but I'm sure your time is gonna be there at one point. Thank you so much. Um, great answers. Loved having this discussion with you all. Um, I know it was definitely very useful for our audience as well. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, let's quickly put them in the chat. We are almost done with our um, session, though. Um, but yeah, I would just like to thank all the panelists for taking out the time and joining us. It definitely means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to everybody who's here, who's listening to the answers. Um, they, like, I, I really hope they took away something. Um, thank you so much.